as we all know, that which I was talking about in my previous video has come to fruition. The tax reform bill was passed. Uh, and so I felt it necessary to share what I'm about to share now. If you go to my blog entry for today on the website, you can click a link there that'll bring you to the PDF file that I have here. I put this on my own server, as a matter of fact. And the reason it's on my server, and it's going to be for as long as I can possibly keep it there, is because of what happened last Sabbath in the middle of the night as we were all sleeping. I think it was like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, they passed those laws. And, uh, and so I downloaded the IRS 501c3 manual for a reason. Notice what it says here on page 4, because they haven't changed the manual yet. This is what it says on page 4 of the IRS instruction manual that all the pastors must read before signing on to this long prophesied 501c3. Now, I'm not going to read all of it, but I do think most should uh, but, I mean, the truth is, this is something all of us already knew about the pastors, right? We already knew that. Uh, that in mind, and if you notice here, like I said, I'm not going to read all this, You can, because there's a lot more than you see here on this one page, but uh, it does say that the holder of the 501c3 can jeopardize their tax-free status by committing certain acts listed in the manual. And to give you an idea, like on this page here, on page number four, it does say that the pastors must not influence legislation or intervene in any political campaign whatsoever. And if you read on in the following pages, they go into pretty good detail as to how the pastors cannot say thing one about any political candidate or law, past, present, or future, to their congregation. Now, we know that all changed as of, well, not all of it, because they didn't change the entire 501c3, of course. Like we were saying before, that one video I made before the, uh, uh, the election, uh, Trump cannot remove the 501c3. It's a prophecy that's going to hold firm until the eastern sky splits. But he can rewrite it, and that's what he's done here. And, uh, and so why is this all a problem where they can't speak politically in the past? Well, besides the fact it removed free speech from the pulpit, we all know how evil politicians have become in the last few generations wherein they passed all sorts of laws allowing very sinful things to be normalized in society that the pastors themselves could have stopped. And that is the main reason Lyndon Johnson set up the 501c3 in the first place. He hated the way the moral compass of the churches prevented him and his cohorts from passing laws that would destroy our Christian society. And so the 501c3 was written to prevent the pastors from saying anything to the church families about the sinful plans of the government. This is why society is such a mess today. I mean, since the government approved pastors refused to jeopardize their bank accounts by saying something to stop what our elected leaders wanted to do, just to name a few, and there's a lot of this stuff online you could find, these anti-Christian laws out there that our pastors could have said something about. Because they refused to say anything, because they didn't want to lose their tax-free status, this Christian nation legalized the killing of babies in abortion clinics. They could have said something then, but nope, that was after 1954. They legalized the use of doctor-assisted suicide to kill your sick loved ones before they could even experience a healing miracle. And they legalized homosexual marriage, which is now causing major problems for Christian business owners all over this nation. As a matter of fact, there's something going on right now in the Supreme Court about it. And the 501c3 even prevents the pastors from warning people about the government schools that teach evolution as well as homosexuality as the norm. And thanks to these preachers of filthy lucre, as they're called in prophecy, the Word of God is now considered hate speech in America. Now, yes, thanks to what happened last Sabbath morning, these government-approved pastors can now endorse political candidates, no matter how evil they may be, and even lobby for religious laws, no matter how unbiblical they are. But here's what most missed. 100% of every pastor that has gained the 501c3 contract with the second beast of Revelation since 1954 read the entire 501c3 instruction manual before signing on to it. They had to read it before they could sign it, right? And so that means they knew for a fact that when they signed it, they would be unable to legally preach the truth about killing babies, their grandparents, or even allowing homosexual marriage, just to name a few. But they signed that contract anyway which shows they are more concerned with saving money than they are with saving souls. Thank you for watching. God bless.